Hey there and welcome back to Zuzi Silly today with a very special blitz. There's gonna be a Lion Amphitheater and this is gonna be a very special episode for many many reasons. So stick with me and let's do it. Alright, first things first, obviously there's no reason hiding what we are doing because you've clearly seen that from the thumbnail. Ho hopefully you did actually click because of that. But there's going to be a lot more info about what we are going to do in this series in the future. First of all, the inspiration for this build is straight out of the Taormina uh, Theatre in Sicily. Now the, the thing is, um, this is a Roman Greek amphitheatre and there is so much about the amphitheatre that I wanted to bring this in in this series. Like it. One of the main things for this series was kind of the architectural inspiration I had anyways for the southern European area and uh, especially Sicily and the south of, uh, you know, Italy, but also the south of uh, Spain and the south of, uh, you know, all the, basically the Roman area. Uh, so now I really do love the fact that I finally had the chance to build something like that without it looking too stupid or um, weird because nearly in every other area in the world this would kind of seem too comic-y and too much, you know, too themed and too weird. But I thought if there is any place in which I can do that and it, it makes sense and it doesn't feel out of place, then it definitely is the Zoo Sicily project. Now, I drew so much inspiration, as I said, out of this Tower Mina build. I also looked at some others, but the, the main feature about the amphitheater is obviously the sound. Now, it is over 2000 years ago that the Romans have built these amphitheaters all across Europe and all across the Mediterranean Mediterranean area, oh my god. Nosy voice and then pronouncing that, that is amazing. Um, <laughs> also sorry, my voice is still nosy, but I'm doing a lot better now, uh, so we have to deal with the nosy voice for a bit more, but I think it's fine, you know, as long as it's not like too throaty and too uh, scratchy, I think the, the nosiness is uh, quite okay. Now also, one thing I want to mention about the uh, the architecture again of these amphitheaters, if you guys have already been to one, uh, and I've been to many actually in southern France, um, so in the Camargue and uh, in the Provence, and I've been uh, to one in Italy, I've been uh, to many in Greek, now a lot of these things, um, and every single time Time I've been to them I you know I'm left mouth open um, and I, I can't I can't get over how insanely crazy the architecture is I mean if you've done this experiment of, of standing down there or like someone else is standing down at the point where usually the Roman whoever the artist the singer or whatever whoever has stood uh, 2,000 years ago and then you have sat all the way on the highest point, for example, of the of the stands or whatever, you can clearly hear that voice as if this person would sta be standing next to you. The acoustic uh, genius about this this architecture, like using using the form factor of an amphitheater um, to to catch basically the sound waves, is absolutely tremendous and. Even though physically it makes a lot of sense nowadays, you know, you watch a YouTube video or like a whatever brilliant.org tutorial or blah, you know, you, you'll find the info about that pretty easily. But 2000 years ago, they did not really have that. They didn't have computer graphics to simulate if the sound is going to go there. And, you know, it's not like they could just build an amphitheater and then like, oh, you know, oh gosh, the angle was kind of wrong. Let's, re let's just rebuild that, you know. That's just not happening, okay. So uh, it's... For me, personally, it's absolutely ridiculous how they were able to manage something like that. And the reason why I go with the lion for this habitat is also pretty obvious, I guess, because it somehow just kind of feels the right animal in here. Like with the raw and the being the main animal of this game anyways, and just in general, the, the way how a lion just is and behaves and stuff, I just felt like it it fits in here and obviously also like kind of the connection with the Roman Empire and you know it's just like fitting in a way um, yeah just just really that was like a straightforward idea even before I started the project and uh, I didn't know exactly in which episode I wanted to do that I for a very brief moment thought about starting this project with this build but then again I was like you know what that, that does, just doesn't make any sense um, but we have to also speak about the positioning especially of this build. Now, I will not be able to show it all in the real-time part to not make the video too awfully long, but there is a lot of thought that went into the placement of this thing. Um, 
I have cut out mostly the planning and stuff of this build. Um, I, I've been building this for way too many hours, to be honest, and it has been already halfway finished before I even visited Frontier one and a half weeks ago. But then afterwards I got sick and, you know, my family got COVID and, you know, that's just all kept me from going on. Um, so this week I always, always had the, you know, the energy to build for a couple of minutes. So that was just like a tedious process of getting back into it. But for a couple of days now I'm feeling better so I could finish it up at least to a certain degree um, but that's nothing to do with me being sick the just I, I had to finish this at this point because everything else I'm going to do with the build is directly influencing what is around the build so um, it, it, there's no point in already doing it quite now because I will eventually change a couple things anyhow uh, mainly the upper area of this habitat for the moment just so you know is a little placeholder so it's meant to be the space that they will have at the end, but the, the way how it's integrated into the zoo will change over time. This is simply normal because I will obviously at a certain point get up to the higher area and then we will build over there. But first of all, and this is why I was talking about the positioning in itself, uh, I, I have put that thing to a certain point, which will be again part of the center plaza so to say now after a lot of debate that i had with myself in my head you know rudy and rudy and rudy had a debate and um <laughs> the final result is i first of all i thought about having a zoo that has kind of a circular um layout in which people basically only have one route to follow the more i thought about it uh, something in me was a bit against it simply because the fact that in this Mediterranean area um, many people just love also to just stroll around you know to just go and enjoy and have a good time and one thing that I did not do too often in the past is some is basically an error I want to correct with this build and this is also focus on gardens and you know recreation areas now you don't have to do a habitat every single square meter of your zoo that doesn't even need to be if you remember how spacious zoos can be and sometimes there are even botanical gardens included into that so um i definitely wanted to achieve something more along the line of um, a combination of gardens and habitats now what we will have is the center the central area of the zoo will be one long kind of strip which uh, is having habitats to the left and right and in the center there will be like restaurants and tavernas and a garden so that you can actually go through this entire plaza and then decide whether you want to go to the right or to the left of the zoo. This is going to be the main um, element of our zoo. It's going to be like this main center area, a bit like the uh, the dried out um, riverbed in Valencia in Spain, uh, which is uh, kind of a tiny bit of an inspiration, just very tiny bit, because I love the fact how they just made like a wonderful park out of it, but it, that's just the single thing I took out of it. Um, but yeah, so that's that. But I feel like I have to talk a bit more about this build. Now, as you've seen a lot of things going on in the background, uh, I have to talk about the, the main inspiration. I already talked about that one as being uh, Taomina, as the uh, amphitheater, which has been put into activities that I had in action like a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if it survived the pandemic or whatever, but, you know, they had like... Um, cultural events there back then and it just looks gorgeous to be honest and I can really imagine myself sitting there having this insane view of uh, Italy and of the sea and just in general and I think you can even see the volcano Etna so really 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 crazy um, and you can really tell how much <laughs> how much the Romans knew about a good life and why there is the name Dolce Vita. You know, that's, that's, that's a good point for that. Now, but this, the habitat in specific is, it looks, I think at the end, I'm 100% happy with how it turned out. But let me tell you, that's not as easy as it seems. Now, it is not going to be a uh, amphitheater that has been here because there's no way that you will ever get the uh, authorities, uh, you know, accept turning that into a habitat for a lion or something. I think that's not going to happen because these things are like very valuable cultural uh, areas. So this has to be a replica of a amphitheater. And 
to create something as a replica that still looks good and not out of place is a challenge on its own on its own already but then making it really appear as if it is not a replica and actually a functional habitat that does work as a habitat and doesn't seem to be comicky and whatever out of place was another challenge so i really really struggled to to get the right amount of broken like you know ruin style but then keep it somewhat clean and modern and planned out as like a habitat design um, at the same time and that was a really tough thing to achieve and I really I, I tested a lot of things so this is the final result you're going to see um, and I tested a lot of things and as always like foliage and stuff will make things look finished but um I thought a lot about where to place the entrance for the guest. I had lo thought a lot of time about um, how big I want to have the terrace being. I thought about what type of plants do I want to have, how much overgrown should it look. So really, it's a huge balancing act to get this thing to, to the state as it is and also make it functional in a way. You know, we also have the task to have a proper backstage area as we have this is in the left hand kind of tower building um and then we will also have like an underground um kind of shelter for them which is going to be connected to the main building there i'm i'll say that straight away i will not 100 percent make that i'm not sure if i will ever feel like the urge to make the backstage and make it really 100 nice looking i potentially will but it's well you can't see it you know there's no point in doing that because you can't see it and i don't see us ever doing like a tour or something where it comes in handy so maybe i'm going to do that later maybe i'm going to employ a certain even for that i don't know but <laughs> uh, it's just i don't know i I feel like the work I put already into this build has been quite tremendous and quite a lot. And honestly, sometimes, and this is just like the trade-off you have to get into, um, to build these t type of buildings, you have to really go into the nitty-gritty details. And sometimes that means that certain things just doesn't really, or that, like they wouldn't really work realistically that well and one of the things is specifically the space given in here in the center uh, like in this building uh, because you know of how the path work works in this game so you know it's not the easiest uh, and all these kind of things tied together to a very hard challenge to make it look good inside of the backstage area but you know maybe I'm going to do it uh, so not 100% promise. Maybe I'm going to make it like semi, you know, that there are kind of uh, implied little cages and stuff that I will not fully fledge out. But who knows? At the end of the day, I want to do it as best as I can. And uh, also, if you guys have some feedback for that, please put it down in the comments if you think it's it's uh, necessary, if you want to see it, whatever you think. Um, also, by the way, this one over here uh, turned out absolutely great. I, I, you know, I checked another inspirational picture I had or like many other pictures I found. And um, sometimes in, in Sicily, you have also these very whitish uh, rocks that you have in the middle of your landscape. And I felt like, you know, that's a cool thing to put in here to have like another focal point um, from the lower area to give this whole thing a bit more context to make it nicer, nicely framed and all these things. I really try to look at every single thing that we need, um, especially because when you enter the zoo, the amphitheater is a lot lower down. That that was also the idea to, to make sure it's not standing too much above. I didn't want to make it thrown the area. I want to make it really feel embedded. Now, obviously, if you're from bird's perspective, you see it. But when you go into the zoo, I don't. I didn't want to ha uh, to make this thing take all the attention, uh, which it doesn't now. So if you go into the zoo, you still look at the wombats, you still see the koalas, you know, you have a good time. You don't see too much else going on. And once you go then further passing by the koalas, you, you'll start noticing this big thing in the background. But uh, due to the different ele elevation heights, uh, it is not as annoying or like it doesn't take too much of the attention um, because I didn't want it to be that um, famous or whatever in the zoo. I, I just wanted to make it like a good part of the zoo. Not more, but not less. So that's that's the main thing. Um, yeah, you can see I also put like a little staircase in the middle to make sure that the lions and the keepers can get up. Uh, funnily enough, these um, aquatic rocks, the four rocks 
staircase pieces are still looking so cool in this build. If I knew that before, I might have even tried to use those as a staircase, even though they might have looked a little bit too repetitive, but whatever. Now, one thing that uh, was always in mind and uh, inevitable for this build is kind of a little um, platform on which the lions can sleep. It's almost like the pride rock, only that it's not like a rock, it's like a limestone footer, if you will, uh, which uh, is kind of like a broken down ruin thing. But again, obviously, since this is all a man-made zoo and all intentionally placed, this is a fake ruin that uh, grants as a wonderful little um, pride area to chill from them uh, just make sure that they lie on top of it uh, have a have a good time you know just making it uh, a bit broken down obviously we have a lot of dirt on top of it which is not intentionally placed this is something that you get after the animals are on top of this you know you've cleaned that a couple of times because some poop have, has been on there um yeah the usual stuff hiding some pieces down below just to make sure that the animals go there eventually which works funny enough finally this works um I decided then to move the uh, the pumpkin away. I just, I don't know, yeah. color-wise, it, it just didn't click with me. I wanted to have it a bit more clean over there. Yeah, just put a couple of rocks in, but as I said, this is just placeholder up here. Um, just making sure it looks quite okay for now, but we will eventually change this fence and area quite a bit as soon as the zoo emerges into that area. Now, uh, we are nearly through with the uh, time-lapse part of the video. Obviously, as always, we were going to have like a wonderful real-time part as well. Uh, today's video marks also the longest video of this series so far. Insane. Uh, it's, you know, it's not super long anyways, but still, I hope you guys uh, like it because it makes up for... Uh, the little bit of drain uh, in the last couple days because we have been sick uh, maybe just like a little info on that as you can still hear my voice is a little bit you know still a bit nosy and i have to cough eventually um not that many uh, much anymore but it's it's still a bit annoying i still will need a couple days to be fully recovered i guess so um not that many videos coming in the next couple days but i hope this will make up for it put a lot of uh, thought and effort and uh, love into this build specifically and uh, so that's that i hope you guys enjoy the real time part in a second uh, this is a little indication sign the last thing we made in uh, this build hope you guys enjoyed that one and now i hand you over to the very competent and uh, happy real time rudy enjoy that one see you after the cut so we are in the real-time part and this is the, well, I'm, I want to say final result, but it's not like the final, final result. Um, this is, well, I've seen the, the lion jumping up here. Um, this is the result for the moment being and uh, I, I am very happy with how it turned out so far. Uh, there were a couple of little things uh, I talked about also in the time-lapse, but I will also talk about now quickly. Um, that will have to be just, this is uh, mainly the upper layer, uh, which has to be changed. Also, I haven't still found a solution for the, uh, yeah, well, very big space in here, for example. So a couple of little things I have to adjust in the amphitheater itself. But overall, I think the experience and everything is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I love the fact how this all works over here so we have this arena so to say the amphitheater we have this wonderful little um, centerpiece with the little water tap down here um, you know they can chill on top of that they can go back into their house uh, which again the backstage isn't done as I talked about but yeah also I, I quite like how the aquatic rock pieces just very neatly work together I still have to see if I can frame the the you know the, the grass a little bit nicer so like very tiny little tweaks but this took me already ages to build and you know to not make this video extremely long um, I thought this is the best way to do and also you know uh, just to confirm this habitat is 100% perfect for the lion so everything is actually working they have enough space they have enough enrichment and I, I think it just looks phenomenal um, the, the biggest struggle obviously was to get the juggle done in terms of making it uh, not too themed and not too crazy and still make like a valid habitat for them and on the other hand side to, to really bring something back in which is super typical for this area and this is heavily based off of one of these uh, wonderful amphitheaters in Sicily uh, on Sicily um, itself so yeah there you go look at that the line just on top of here there's like a little blood thingy uh, down here so that they actually have a reason to go here I really love that really love the fact that I can go 
yeah, the jumping is quite heavy in this habitat, as you can imagine. Uh, but all over, I am quite happy with how they use it. Um, so it's, well, that, that is a little bit weird. But, uh, you know, apart from that, it usually works pretty fine. And um, they do actually use it quite nicely. So this is neat. A little pooping going on as well. Uh, let's just quickly jump out of this cam and go into the free look cam. There you go. Move out. And you can see it's full glory and oh god i love it i just love the the interaction with it i love how the backstage is uh, you know uh, made here with uh, these lovely little pvc thingies uh, where you know they're actually animated the roof you know a little bit of clutter has to be on top of there yeah uh, i i also want to put a bit more um enrichment stuff for the for the guests down here at certain points but yeah i'm not 100 happy um quite yet because there are like little details that have to be done also we need some signs that we can actually put on here um i haven't found a solution for that quite yet i love how they look themselves i don't want to slap like uh, another thing on top of it but i think i have to to make it actually usable but yeah so this is that and i really hope you guys enjoy this build as much as i do i'm just gonna go and have a little final framing over here for you guys so there you go, the lion just jumping on top of there, making it the perfect frame over here. There you go. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did enjoy, um, first of all, sorry for that little break, but, you know, health comes first, always. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy that one. And if you are here for this series and you want to see more of that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Recently, a lot of people joined the channel, which I'm super happy about. So if you don't want to miss out on anything new, make sure to subscribe to the channel, check the sub feed every now and then, and just enjoy your time watching my stuff because there's clearly more. So if you want to watch more, to the top right, you're going to find a little card that is uh, actually for you. So you can watch the next video if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Then I wish you a wonderful weekend and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Again, as I just said, enjoy your time, stay safe and goodbye.